Now let's talk about deep neural networks with the Keras functional API. In this section, you'll learn how to create wide and deep models in Keras with just a few lines of TensorFlow code. Take a look at this. No, this section is not about ornithology or the study of birds. We all know that seagulls can fly, right? Well, we also know that pigeons can fly as well. It's intuitive that animals with wings can fly, you know, just like we learned growing up. So making that generalization or that leap feels kind of natural. Ooh, but what about penguins? Or I guess you could say ostriches for that matter. It's not an easy question to answer, but by jointly training a wide linear model for memorization alongside a deep neural network for generalization, one can combine the strengths of both to bring us one step closer to that human-like intuition. At Google, we call it wide and deep learning. It's useful for generic large-scale regression and classification problems with sparse inputs. And again, that's categorical features with a large number of possible feature values, like high dimensionality, such as recommender systems, search, and ranking problems. Those are some of the most common scenarios. Now, your human brain is a very sophisticated learning machine formed by rules, by memorizing everyday events, like, hey, that seagull can fly, pigeons can fly, but also generalizing those learnings to things that we haven't seen before. Well, okay, I think animals with wings can fly. Perhaps more powerfully, memorization also allows us to further refine our generalized rules with exceptions, like penguins can't fly. As we're exploring how to advance machine intelligence, we asked ourselves the question, can we teach computers to learn like humans do by combining both the power of memorization with generalization, making that leap from training to inference? This is what a sparse matrix looks like. It's super, super wide with lots and lots of features. You want to use linear models to minimize the number of free parameters. And if the columns are independent, linear models may suffice. Nearby pixels, however, tend to be highly correlated. So putting them through a neural network or a deep neural network, we have the possibility that the inputs get decorrelated and mapped to a lower dimension. Intuitively, this is what happens when your input layer takes each pixel value and the number of hidden nodes. It's much less than the number of input nodes. A wide and deep model architecture is an example of a complex model that can be built rather easily using a Keras functional API. The functional API gives your model the ability to have multiple inputs and outputs. It also allows for models to share layers. And actually, it's a little bit more than that. It allows you to define ad hoc network graphs should you need. With that functional API, models are defined by creating instances of layers and then connecting them directly to each other in pairs then defining a model that specifies the layers to act as the input and the output to the model, kind of stringing everything together. The functional API, it's a way for you to create models that are more flexible than the sequential API. It can handle models with nonlinear topology, models with shared layers, and models with multiple inputs or outputs. So consider that functional API in those use cases. The API also makes it easy to manipulate multiple inputs and outputs. And this can't be done with the sequential API. Here's a very simple example. Let's say you're building a system for ranking custom issue tickets by priority and then routing them to the right department. Your model could have these four inputs. The title of the ticket, that's a text input. The text body of the ticket, also a text input. Any tags added by the user, categorical input. An image representing different logos that could appear on that ticket. It'll then have two outputs a department that should handle the ticket. You could use a classification activation function like softmax output over the set of departments and a text sequence with a summary of the text body. In the functional API, models are created by specifying their inputs and outputs in a graph of layers. That means a single graph of layers can be used to generate multiple models. You can treat any model as if it were a layer by calling it on an input 
or an output of another layer. Let that one sink in, that's kind of cool. Note that by calling a model, you're not just reusing the architecture of the model, you're also reusing its weights. This is an example of what code for an autoencoder might look like. Notice how the operations are treated like functions with the outputs serving as the inputs in the subsequent layers. Another really good use for the functional API are models that share layers. Shared layers are layer instances that get reused multiple times in the same model. They learn features that correspond to multiple paths in the graph of layers. Shared layers are often used to encode inputs that come from, say, similar places, like two different pieces of text that feature relatively the same vocabulary. Since they enable the sharing of the information across these different inputs, and they make it possible to train a model on much less data. If a given word is seen in one of those inputs, that will benefit the processing of all inputs that go in through that shared layer. To share a layer in the functional API, just call the same layer instance multiple times. Okay, now for the fun part. How do you actually create one of these wide and deep models? Okay, so we're gonna start by setting up the input layer for the model using the features of the model data. For this example, we're gonna be using the pickup and drop off latitude and longitude, as well as the number of passengers to try to predict the taxi cab fare for a given ride. These inputs will be fed to the wide and deep portions of the model. Using the inputs above, we can then create the deep portion of the model, layers.dense is a densely connected neural network layer. By stacking multiple layers, we can make it deep. We can also create the wide portion of the model, for example, using dense features, which produces a dense tensor based on a given amount of feature columns that you define. Lastly, how do you bring them both together? We combine the wide and deep portions and compile the model as you see here. Training, evaluation, and inference work exactly the same way for models built with the sequential API method or the functional API like you saw with these examples. Okay, so let's talk about some strengths and weaknesses. Strengths, it's less verbose than using keras.model subclasses. It validates your model while you're defining it. In the functional API, your input specification, that's your shape and your D-type, is created in advance via the input. And every time you call a layer, the layer checks that the specification passed to its matches, its assumptions, and it'll raise a super helpful error message if not. This guarantees that any model that you build with a functional API will run. All debugging, other than conversions related debugging, will happen statically during the model construction and not at execution time. This is similar to type checking in a compiler. Your functional model is plottable and inspectable. You can plot the model as a graph and you can easily access intermediate nodes in this graph. For example, to extract and reuse the activations of intermediate layers. Your functional model can be serialized or cloned. Because a functional model is a data structure rather than a piece of code, it's safe to serialize and can be saved as a single file that allows you to recreate the exact same model without having access to any of the original code. See our saving serialization guide for more details. I'll provide a link. Here are some weaknesses. It does not support dynamic architectures. The functional API treats models as DAGs or directed acyclic graphs of those layers. This is true for most deep learning architectures, but not all. For instance, recursive networks or tree RNNs do not follow this assumption and cannot be implemented in the functional API. Sometimes you just need to write everything from scratch. When writing advanced architectures, you may want to do things that are outside the scope of defining a DAG of layers. For instance, you may want to expose multiple custom training and inference methods to your model instance. This would require subclassing.